Climate change is a wicked problem. From food insecurity, to deepening inequality, to rising disaster risks, to booming health hazards, it is hard to find an area of human life that it does not affect. When it comes to security, however, the impacts of climate change are particularly harmful. On top of creating unbearable natural conditions in already fragile social and environmental contexts, the conflict situations it aggravates are then more likely to roll back hard-won progresses in peace and development. How can the international community best address this challenge? Climate security is a topic because we know now that changes in the climate can have security impact. Climate is a threat multiplier. Issues like desertification and water scarcity can lead to more instability, can fuel conflict, can fuel migration. So there is a very strong link between climate and security. I think it's important that we look at the different aspects of climate security like water security, food security, health impacts of climate change, and the way those impact things like migration, gender disparities, radicalization or displacement of people. It's only gonna get worse if we don't um, kind of preempt some of the situations around the globe. Climate change affects resources and resource scarcity affects the economy, and the economy then affects people who either tend to migrate or move on and this resource scarcity and economic downturn might lead to social unrest. So therefore affecting security. So this then deprives people of livelihood and makes them more amenable to being taken in by extremist organizations and acting in a violent or conflictive manner. Responsibility for climate-related security risks falls to different institutions within the United Nations systems, with no single entity responsible for coordinating activities on joint risk assessment or risk management assistance. Through the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, and the Paris Climate Agreement, the world has made significant progress in building global institutions for addressing climate change. Yet it has made less progress in building frameworks for addressing the concurrent risks of social and political instability, insecurity and conflict that arise from the interaction of climate change with social, economic, demographic and political factors. Whereas these issues touch the mandates of many UN organs and agencies, the UN Charter assigns the UN Security Council a preeminent role with respect to safeguarding international peace and security. As climate change is becoming an increasingly stronger force in disrupting human, national and international security, the Security Council is facing rising demands to address these security risks. Some feel that um, the UN Security Council being a rather exclusive organ, um, that you know, they don't want it to encroach on the mandates of either more inclusive organs such as the General Assembly or the Climate Change Negotiations, the UNFCCC, where they are fully represented as a, you know, one, one country, one vote, whereas in the UN Security Council they obviously are not. But at the same time, it's not about the UNSC encroaching on the mandates of these other organizations. Actually, the UN General Assembly has asked the UN Security Council to do this. But we want the UN Security Council to work on the security implications. And the Security Council has a unique mandate, namely the primary responsibility for international peace and security. Well, I think it is extremely important to keep this on the agenda of the Security Council. It was put there with some resistance, but it was tolerated by those that were most critical. I think now the Security Council understands that there is a clear link and a risk of climate change also creating new conflicts that, of course, also can develop into full-blown wars in the end. And that can happen over a lack of drinking water or food, of course, but also social unrest that develops into, into full-blown crisis. Although there's not yet been a UNSC resolution dedicated to climate change, the Council's position has slowly evolved, in great part due to the work done by countries such as Germany and Sweden during their Council presidencies. 
The body now acknowledges the security risks related to climate change and calls for appropriate risk assessment and management in specific geographic contexts. Links between climate change and security are, are complex and contextual and while the UN has a lot of expertise um, and conducts many different assessments in the area of climate change, disaster risk reduction and also conflict prevention, there is not yet a systematic and system-wide approach to climate security risk assessments. So this is really an important gap and we need to be able to conduct better analysis, have better data and assessments to be able to use to inform our own work. And so. Um, this is the mandate of the UN Climate Security Mechanism. If you talk of Somalia, you talk of the Lake Chad, you talk of Mali, the challenges are so much more than um, monitoring. So monitoring is neglected because you have bigger challenges. You have to feed people, you have to respond to disasters, you have to fight the insurgent groups. So the little resources you have goes into these processes. We should have some form of risk assessment on areas that are vulnerable, and then that will be the starting point. So you have situations where, for example, the accelerated melting of Arctic ice impacts the jet stream, which affects weather patterns, causing impacts on food production in the big bread baskets, like in Russia and the, the US and Australia, which in turn impacts on food prices, which can instabilize situations on local communities' ability to handle their own food security, which in turn destabilizes societies. And you see this crisis occurring in Syria, in Sudan, and North Africa with the Arab Spring. Every country in the Pacific, at least, has a very different land tenure system, has a different culture, the way that it interacts with the environment and deals with security issues and conflict issues. And so interventions need to be homegrown with the support of the international community uh, engaged in, in that approach. To foster effective climate-sensitive peace-building efforts, it is imperative to assess the peculiar ways in which climate change translates into security risks in each of the world's regions. There are no all-encompassing solutions. These must be tailored to regional, national and local needs and conditions. The best way to do this is to tap into the knowledge of local experts. So now we've got into the implementation phase, we've set this, this opportunity and you know, standing on the shoulders of giants, huge amounts of research and, and efforts and, and political leadership has gone into this. We now have to think how does it apply in reality? So it's got to be truly sustainable, we've got to really sustain the peace and that involves talking with lots of different actors. So you're talking with development actors, humanitarian actors, peacekeeping actors, foreign policy, different donor countries, all these different actors and of course the domestic governments first and foremost. So this becomes a real challenge because it's a whole question of translation. Every single type of discipline is often saying very similar things, but they don't have the common language to understand as a humanitarian actor what you're trying to say as a foreign policy actor. And that is the real challenge that, that we're butting up against. We went through all the regions in Mali. We did a prioritization around the 70s, 17 SDGs and 169 SDA target. So we have at this moment a huge database which informs us about the priority of each region in Mali. And the implication of this in terms of planning development is very important. So that's why in Mali we are now trying to go for a regionalization because the different regions of the country have different interests and different needs. So I think the SDG implementation will also help the country to tackle the climate issue and the security issues. My research has shown is that the state where um, these disasters are happening can either respond to this situation by giving people more rights, giving people more resilience, making them much more able to respond to climate security challenges. In Pakistan, that in the aftermath of floods, one of the reasons that there was no massive um, militancy takeover or any of those hyper-sensationalist kind of accounts of militant takeovers was because the state was very proactive in reaching out to people in the aftermath of disaster and providing them the sort of uh, intervention that they were seeking. The facts are clear. 
it is evident that climate security risks are going to increase in the future. The international community of researchers, practitioners and politicians is widely aware that these risks must be addressed in a comprehensive manner. It is a crucial step in this endeavour for the UNSC to put climate change on its agenda and most importantly, to address the risks it poses to security within its mandate. Mitigation is key, but it requires early and decisive action, and the moment for this action is now.